We are a web design and neuromarketing agency based in Miami, and we specialize in consumer seduction. So we have a few tips for your website redesign. I know you guys are rebranding. Um, overall, your this is interesting. Your site gets a decent amount of traffic, but it's designed like a local small business website. Typically, when we see medical websites where there are six practices in the city, they're more structured like WebMD, so you come off more as an authority when you have a site built like that. This website is fine, but it's not really converting people the way it should be. In reviewing your site structure, I would definitely move these logos towards the top of the page. Anything that communicates authority, you know, if it's a press article or a certification you guys have, anything like that that's going to say you guys are professionals, you know what you're doing, is going to be really beneficial to that consumer and they're going to be influenced by it if they see it before the fold on your page, which would mean they would have to see it like right around this area. We don't we don't expect the consumer to actually scroll the entire page. Um, your physician's page, this looks uh, very plain. It's not the most professional page. You guys have a lot of physicians in your network and you have a lot of areas that you specialize in, lots of board certifications, and so this is one of the most important pages of the website. This is going to give the consumer an idea of how experienced you guys are. It's got to have a certain look to it that's just more refined that will really influence that consumer's biases when they click on this page. Right now, the organization of the site is very confusing to the user. You guys have tons of information, which is great. That does help you with the ranking in Google. However, it's not going to, it's not that organized. If a consumer doesn't know about your practice, they need a very clear sales funnel that they can follow that leads them into the actual office. And so when they land on your website, they need to be able to say, okay, this is my issue. This is what they address. Do they cover my insurance? When can I book an appointment? It needs to be very concise. So when we take a look at your services page, this page would be more effective if there was some kind of filter for the different areas that you guys treat. So instead of listing everything in alphabetical order, because patients often won't know the specific condition they're dealing with, they might have vague symptoms that they're dealing with or something like that. Having filters will make this page much easier to navigate. And then you guys have a lot of information, like when you actually click these links, it takes you to information about each condition, so that's good. Okay, so when we click the About Our Practice page, this is really interesting. It doesn't actually tell the patient much about the practice. When we're talking about consumer seduction, you want to sell benefits. You don't want to sell the features. So office hours, fax and phone number, how we communicate, care coordinate, these are all features. And this is akin to uh, you know selling the aesthetics of a product but not the actual utility of that product. And so on this page, it's very important that you guys communicate the benefits of working with you. Things on medical websites that are effective. If you have a lot of statistics on your site, charts, graphs, patient testimonials, Anything with numbers is going to be considered scientific when it comes to neuropsychology. So if we think about the way consumers are assessing value, they're thinking from a scientific perspective when they're on a medical website. So a couple more things. You guys definitely need an email opt-in on the website. I like that you have the live chat. This is very useful because patients will want to get in touch immediately. Uh, that's common in medicine where they want their doctor to be you know, on call 24 seven. And so this adds a little bit of comfort to the site. That's good. I'm not sure how quickly you guys respond to that, but if you're not responding right away, then it's not going to be very beneficial to have that because that'll create frustration for the patient. It would be better if you had a, you know, get more information box or send us an email. We get back in 24 hours, something like that. So that way you're setting proper expectations. In medicine, communication with patients is very difficult because you guys are highly specialized, you know what you're doing, you're very technical and skilled and educated, and most patients are everyday consumers and they treat medicine just the same as they would treat consumption of McDonald's or yoga mats. And so they don't understand the terminology often and they also are not able to communicate what they're dealing with in very specific terms. So it can be kind of challenging and we deal with the issue of bedside manner as a result of that. This live chat is good if you guys are responding quickly. The color palette on this website, I have to be honest with you, it's not my favorite because 
Purple typically represents artisticness, creativity, things like that. And in medicine, no one wants a doctor who's getting artistic and creative during a very important and expensive surgery. In medicine, we typically see blues and greens. Uh, even like this photo in the background, this guy's wearing a green shirt, the doctor has a blue shirt. Blue represents trust and calmness. And so we look at Twitter and, and, and Facebook uh, LinkedIn, all the sites where they're taking our private information, and they're blue because it encourages the user to actually trust the website. Now, if you use green, it encourages healing and it makes the consumer feel a sense of health. And so, lots of natural remedy websites are green, lots of um, nature logos, bio anything is usually green with hints of gray, black, and white. So the color palette is very confusing right now to the user and it can definitely influence conversion through the website and it's going to also influence how the patient perceives your business and so when they actually come into the office their expectations are going to be a little different than if the website properly positioned that patient beforehand. From a brand marketing angle, this would be the site structure we recommend you go with. This, you still have the contact information up here. Um, this is a very, it's a framework, so it's gonna include a lot more pages if we did um, in, if we did end up working with you guys, but it breaks down different points that are gonna influence that consumer's biases when they land on your website. First, we have a number of patients healed here. This says a lot. This numbers are very important, like I was mentioning earlier, and this number says that you guys are huge. You're a huge company, you've treated a lot of patients, you know, etc. And also we included the top multi-specialty provider in NY. So that's important because everyone wants to deal with the best, the top, the most experienced. And so telling the patient that you are is very effective in conversion. And then also transparent, comprehensive, and efficient. Patients care about saving just like any consumer. They care about saving time and money. And so if you can communicate to them that you're efficient and that you don't have to go back and do a bunch of revisions on, proce on procedures and that you don't waste their time and that you are not going to be 40 minutes late for an appointment and that you also will save them money. So comprehensiveness. If they come to your practice, they can get all of their medical needs taken care of under one roof. Also breaking down the areas that you treat because right now your website looks like you treat just about everything. And if you do treat just about everything, great, but we need to tell the patient specifically that we treat everything to deal with, you know, your feminine health or everything to deal with the medications you're on, whatever. Anything that can simplify that sales funnel will make that patient end up in your office more quickly. Also, your locations and office hours. You guys have a bunch of locations, and right now it's a bit much on your website. If you condense them down to where the patient can click the location that's nearest them and get that information, that would be awesome. If we did design your website, these would be links, so they could easily click this through the website and call you or GPS your address. We treat patients like family, so saying things like this will be very effective. Right now, you guys have a phrase, and trust your health to our doctors, and this is a very doctoral phrase. Um, it's I can see why you guys put it there, but it's not speaking to from that patient's lens. It's speaking to them like you're, you're separate from them and that you don't understand them. Oftentimes, the copywriting on a website can be counter-effective, and it can actually make the, the patient feel less of a connection with you if it's not spoken in their language and if they don't trust you. Also, exceptional people, exceptional care. This is one of those things that on websites, we often see this where people want to communicate something and they just kind of say it in, in just language, and, but it doesn't mean anything to the patient. What are exceptional people? What is exceptional care? You know, typical marketing. So I would definitely change some of that as well. So also breaking down on your homepage, quick facts about your practice, um, telling them that your doctors are certified, telling them that you deal with patient medical history, that you accept last minute visits, you have natural medicine or natural remedies, that you offer insurance benefits, you give honest feedback, things like this are going to really stand out to that patient. The framing effect is one technique used in consumer seduction and the framing effect involves framing and positioning things on your website to seductively tell that consumer or that patient what you're trying to do for them or what you're trying to communicate without just blatantly saying 
this is exactly what we do. And so having little symbols like this, you know, the hourglass, they see time and they see last minute, oh great. This is all they're gonna read. They're not gonna read these paragraphs, they're not gonna click around. They're gonna instantly be like, okay, how can I contact you? Schedule a visit and they're gonna call you or email you. We want to streamline that process of that patient digging for whatever they're looking for on your website and calling you and getting into your office as quickly as possible. We don't want them delaying or clicking around or shopping around because all of that is just going to eventually lead to them going to a competitor. Now this is just a preview of what the uh, physicians page would look like so and you can have these down here but then the rest of the physicians would all be on the physicians page we could have a button or something like that but you want to basically put the doctor's name what they specialize in and then a couple key points relating to the things they treat or the services they offer you don't want the doctor's page to be an entire medical history where he went to school all, all those things because Ultimately, the patient doesn't care. The patient's in pain, and they want to see if there's a doctor at your practice that can remedy that pain. And so they're looking for the quickest solution possible. If they see diabetes, okay, schedule a visit. They're going to take that fast route. Now, ultimately, it's good to have the doctor's information on the interior pages of the site, so maybe a button that links to his full profile. That would be great. You definitely don't want to skimp on information. Um, and that also helps index in Google. So including that would be great, but just not in the most important parts of the site. You want to make this as easy for the patient to read and understand as possible. We did a Facebook poll comparing the new website design with the old website design to see what the average consumer thought of your site. And this is what we got. 60% preferred this newer design. We asked which doctor would you trust and 40% preferred the older design. This is good. This tells us that some people do actually like the older site. So that means it's not just a horrible site and it's, these aren't you know invalid results or something. The demographics we tested were multiple different ethnicities, ages from about 25 to 65 and many different locations all over the US, many different industries from teachers to engineers to entrepreneurs. And this is what we found. So taking a look at the back end of your site, it looks like you guys have been doing some digital marketing work, which is good, that's always good. Um, this is getting a little out of control. I'd be very careful with the number of backlinks you're getting because Google did do an update in 2018 and that update did affect many medical websites. It affected basically the sites that have um, very secure information on them and so you guys are toting the line with this one. I would be very careful. It looks like some of those links, like you have a Huffington Post link, which is awesome. This is great. It's authoritative. It's reputable. But then you've got a bunch of Asian writing links. These are considered spam in Google, and they will de-index the site altogether if they deem it a spammy website. So if you get too many of these, and if the algorithm starts to pick up on that, then it can literally shut down your entire online business. So it's good. It looks like you guys are indexing for keywords, which is a good sign. That means the website hasn't been penalized yet. Also including an email sign up or some way for the user to keep in touch with you would be good. Having just like a little box at the top of the site that says enter your email to get the latest updates or get a free flu shot or something would be very helpful to the user because if they are shopping around, you don't want them to go into the search engine and then forget the name of your practice, but remember your logo and so they can't find you again. It would be best if they could sign up for an email list and if you incentivize them to sign up for that email list even better. So here's a little bit more information about neuromarketing. Uh, since you're in medicine, I'm sure you're familiar with neuropsychology and how the brain and sensory motor cognitive responses work with purchasing and everyday life decision making. Basically, we take that concept and we apply it to digital marketing strategies. So we build your website to neuro market to a consumer from the moment they land on your site, the colors, the wording, the framing, the authority on the site, everything should speak to those biases and work with those biases and not trigger negative bias reactions. So we work with things like the bandwagon effect, fear of missing out, uh, sexual competitiveness, uh, we use mirror neurons and stock imagery, we use escalation and body language. It's all in an effort to trigger brain chemistry and get that patient to make positive associations with your brand. 
So I hope this video was informative. If you have any questions, please send my assistant an email and we will be in touch.